We've been talking about Merritt Street Media, the new network that we launched today, which is why we're celebrating with uh, kicking the uh, Fill in the Blanks podcast back off with this live broadcast. Uh, But Steve Harvey, if you don't know, um, is part of the Merritt Street uh, Media family. In fact, uh, he's an equity partner in Merritt Street Media. He and I are partners in the in the network here. Mm. And uh, mm. I, I called Steve uh, some time ago and said, hey, let me tell you what I'm doing. And uh, you need to come do this with me. And uh, I described it to him. And what do you think when I called you about this? Honestly, man. Yeah. I mean, first of all, I was floored because, I mean, y'all, look, look, look at me. Dr. Phil calls you. Dr. Phil McGraw, that's who y'all call him. I call him Philly. Philly calls me. You know his track record. You know what he does. And he says, hey, man, you know, me and you, we've been friends for a long time. I got something for you. I want you to come with me. I want you to be an equity partner in this deal with me. And I want you to, this is what we're going to do. We're going to open up a TV network and we're going to produce TV. And I want you to have a place where you can bring content and ideas and how you really think and feel. I want you to come do it. And I went, I went okay, first of all, are you joking? <laughs> you got to be kidding me, right? Okay, you called me. And so first I'm thinking, okay, okay. First, you know, here's the, here's the crazy part. I know you didn't need no money. That was so that was cool. I was relaxed right there. Cause this ain't a dude that, you know, Philly, we don't have a relationship. Well, you you know how you got people call your house and you go, uh, what the hell they want? Well, he don't want no money. So I said, okay. And then I thought about it. And then I said, so what are you saying, man? I said, hey man, can you send me something over? I'm within five minutes, he sent over a whole presentation. I mean, it was so complete pictures of the studio he was building and what it was gonna look like when it was finished. And I said, is this dude for real? So I said, so Philly, you just want me to join in with you? He said, man, I ain't thinking of nobody else. You it. You it. And I hung the phone up. I called my wife. I said, baby, I just got a call from Philly. She said, how's Robin doing? They ain't talk about that right now. Listen to me. Robin had on some shoes the other day. I was going, where are we going with this? What, what, what's happening? And, 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 and next thing you know, I said, this is what he want me to do. She said, okay, so when you going out there? I said, baby, you, I'm just, this is what he want me to do. She said, Steve, when you, it's doctor, what, what, you, what you want me to tell you? You know what I mean? Stupid things you've done. And I went, Are you, that's where you gonna go with it now? And so that was it. And then he sent the stuff over and I, I, I couldn't believe it, man. In all honesty, this is what you call favor. This is, man, when you're going along and God just do a solid for you. This one, you just, this is, see, I can't give nobody credit for this except God because it was no doing of mine. It, I didn't call you. I didn't say, hey, Philly, what you working on now? I got a call out of nowhere. It was you. Look, we see each other on vacation. We sitting out talking. This dude just called me and just, here, I want to do this with you. And I was just, I, I was honored, man, really, really just honored, bro. Well, I, and the reason I called you, and as I've said to you, nobody else, there, there's not anybody else on the list. It's just you and me. I mean, that's it. <laughs> um, because uh, I, I said, I, I take this real serious. And there is, uh, you and I have a very, um, aligned value system uh, from the very beginning. And I've, this is going to sound like mutual admiration society for a few minutes here, mm-hmm. but uh, people know, know you from what you do and what they see on the air, but I know you as a real person. I know you as a husband and a father mm-hmm. and uh, a, a real person away from the camera and who you are and what you believe and what you've struggled to overcome. And mm-hmm. I, I, I know who you are and I know how much you have to offer uh, to this country and keeping this country on track and online. And, and 
I, I didn't name this network by accident. I, I didn't reach into a bag and pull out a mm. name, Merit. This It's Merit Street Media, a, as you know. And I think this country is built on hard work and talent and added value. And I, I know that about you. I've known that about you for years and years and years. And it's it's not about being a victim. It's about sucking it up and doing what you got to do to get ahead. And, and that's that defines you. We, you and I have talked about it a, a hundred times. And uh, I, I know what kind of father you are, and I know what kind of family man you are. I know, mm. you know, I, I've seen you and Marjorie. We've vacationed together. We've had serious conversations. We've problem solved together. Uh, we fought them off at the gates together, uh, you <laughs> yeah. know. So uh, I thought there's this is somebody that uh, ha- we have shared life experiences and and shared values. And I said, man, this is somebody that uh, I- I'll go in the foxhole with. And that's why I picked up the phone and called you. And man, I appreciate it. You know, man, um, you talk about how things are going in this country and everything. You know, look, man. You know, it, it amazes me because I'm 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 in I'm in, I'm a a middle guy. You know, the the symbol for this country is an eagle, right? Right. Order for an eagle to fly proper, you got to have a right wing and a left wing. I don't go all the way with what nobody say. I don't. I'm not really the far right guy, and I sure ain't the far left guy. You know, because I like to get it, man, where I care about my family. I care about my grandchildren. I care about my kids, man. And I'm trying to figure out the world that they're going to be in if we keep going at the pace we're going. Can I tell you something I saw online that was really kind of crazy to me? You know, because we have the issue now. We got all this pronoun picking, right? That's cool. But this was a guy, I saw this online that really kind of made me, I, I, I laughed, but it threw me. I had a little boy in front of this table, and they put two Oreo cookies in front of him and put $500 on the other side. They told this little boy to pick. And that little boy was looking at them cookies and looking at that $500. And let me tell you something, man, he was ripped open. I mean, he was gutted because he them cookies – And that 500, he couldn't quite figure it out. So they doubled down and they put four Oreo cookies in front of him and $1,000. I saw this little boy. He had made up his mind. The ripping was over. It's it's a done deal. Damn it, four cookies. He picked them four cookies. He was through. You had solved it for me. The money or the cookies. And then a lady came up and said, and this is why kids don't need to be picking their sex at school. And I laugh, but that hit me like a hammer, man. I'm finna say, where are we going with all this? Hold up, man. We got to slow down a little bit. Because this little boy clearly took them four cookies. Yeah, the, the thousand was right here. You know the thousand, you could have bought how many packs of cookies? Yeah. You could have got a bike. Boy, you could have got yourself some new school clothes. You could have bought the girl down the street some cookies. You could have bought the Girl Scout box of cookies. You know how many girls you'd have had after that? That boy picked them four cookies. And I said, man, that's that's what we got to start thinking about. And, you know, man, I'm okay with everybody making whatever decisions they want to make. But you got to be okay when somebody has a counter now. You got to be okay with a counter, too. You know, if, if you're free to think and feel, that's fine and dandy. But you got to be open to the counter now because you, you can't publicly think and feel one way and expect publicly not to be thought of another way. And I, I just kind of look at stuff like that, man, and I think it's a fair to be able to talk about stuff like that and say it out loud without, like you say, without cancellation because I ain't trying to cancel nobody. You're an adult person, man. Do you, but we got to take a sharp look at where we letting our kids go. Well, I couldn't agree more. And I I think that we're in a real bad spot when we can't ask questions without getting labeled as a hater or some kind of phobe. We're in a real bad spot when we have people so afraid to speak their mind 
or ask questions or disagree uh, for fear that they're going to get they're going to get canceled. And I always thought about college as somewhere you went to hear other ideas, mm. or you 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 went to the town square back in the old days where you you had different points of view and you you went to hear what they were. Now, that's not the case. If somebody disagrees, they get shouted down. They call it the heckler's veto. Mm. They're going to they're going to shout you down where they don't hear the other side. And what I want to do at at Merritt Street is I want us to own the debate lane. Look, this is where you can come to talk about both sides of an issue and then let people make up their own mind. Yeah. That's what I want our news department to do. You know, you, you turn on one cable news and you hear everything on the right wing. You turn on the other, you hear everything on the left wing. How, here's a novel approach. Let's tell people what happened and shut up. <laughs> Just tell them what happened and then shut up and let yeah. them make up their mind about whether it's good news or bad news. Yeah. It's an insult to people. We don't need to tell people what to think. We need to tell people how to think. We don't teach kids how to think anymore. We don't teach critical thinking. Let's teach kids how to think instead of what to think. Let them decide what they think. Let's just teach them how to do critical thinking, how to reason their way through something and let them decide what they think. They don't need to be told what to think. That's what's happening in college right now. We're, t- we're teaching kids what to think instead of how to think. We need to teach them how to go through the thought process. Yeah. That's what's important. Yeah. Yeah, man, we, 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 I just want to be able to, you know, look, man, if you have a difference of opinion from me, I'm fine with that. I'm, f- I'm really, really cool with that, man. We, you, you don't got to think like me, but I ain't got to think like you either. And hold on, man, I'm going to allow you to say what you want to say, but can I not be allowed to say what I want to say? Now, if my, what I want to say is not lined up with you, why I got to bite the bullet? Why you got to cancel my show? Because it didn't line up with what you said. And, you know, man, that's the trouble that we're having right now, man. And it seems like uh, that that cancellation thing is winning right now. Yeah, but I think there's starting to be a swing back. And um, I, I, I certainly hope that's the case. 